Well, good morning from uh, Pecan Hill Farms. Uh, sorry for the mess in here, but uh, we are uh, doing a lot of uh, canning today. Uh, I'm, uh, we've had a lot of wet weather, which is unusual for us here in Texas. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, I think I've gotten around six inches. But uh, <clears throat> So we're trying to get some of this stuff canned. I've been giving things vegetables away the last three weekends you can see here we're uh, we've put up some tomatoes and some pickles and a lot of blackberry jam you can see right there lots of blackberry jam matter of fact I got more over here we've got uh, okra in our dryer here uh, <clears throat> I saw this on Living Traditions Homestead. They uh, dry their okra uh, and make okra chips, and they eat them kind of like potato chips. So I did it last year. Uh, <clears throat> they were all right, but I think I put a little of this uh, Creole seasoning on them this time, and so I think uh, they're going to taste a little bit spicier, maybe a little bit... Uh, <clears throat> more appetizing. I may enjoy them more, but so we got some of those going there. Uh, here in my canning pot, which I know I got the lid turned upside down. It's, it's strange, but uh, I don't have a lid for this fits this pot. But uh, I've got uh, uh, jalapenos going in there, putting up some jalapenos. So that's kind of what we're doing today. Went out and did some picking. I got some pictures uh, you'll see. Uh, I took some food by a couple of people's houses. Some vegetables today. Uh, on my way to the store to get some more canning jars. Uh, so we got a lot going on. I've got a lot of these cucumbers. I may try to put in, put in some more, uh, make some more pickles. But we're trying to get a lot of things done because with rain, uh, in my garden comes bugs and uh, specifically aphids uh, they seem to explode after a dry period and there's rain uh, they really uh, explode uh, we've had so much rain that a lot of my tomatoes are uh, are just busting open uh, uh, you can see here there's some here that we picked that are but I, I mean, I've got them. I've got them outside that are just, just totally just busted wide open because of all the rain. So uh, we're going to go out there in the garden. I show you my problem here with aphids, and uh, I think the only solution is to uh, is just to pull up some of the plants in a trash bag and put them out for trash. Uh, maybe the only way I can con control these crazy uh, aphids. But uh, let me get out in the garden and uh, we'll take a look at it. Before I get out in the garden, I'll also show I've been putting up, uh, making zucchini bread. I handed several of these out from the neighbors, but uh, I've got a lot of this zucchini and uh, I can't think of a better way to use it than making zucchini bread. So uh, that's another thing I've been doing. Last night I made these. I'll probably make some more tonight. Uh, i got one in there that I've been eating on. But uh, so anyway... Let's get out that garden and I'll show you my problem with the, uh, with all the aphids. Uh, here's my first case here. The other day, uh, everything looked pretty good. I was out here looking and didn't see anything, picking cucumbers. Now, today, after rain, uh, I mean, it's just crazy. Look at all of them on there. I mean, you can have all the ladybugs in the world, but when they get this bad, this fast, there's not much you can do. I mean, I could get in here and spray a bunch of uh, soapy water or whatever on here. I think I'm just going to be, I'd be fighting an uphill battle on this one. Uh, but it's been, it was dry, you know, I was, a few videos back I was complaining about all the cracks in the the cracks in the in the ground and I think I think since then I've gotten about five inches 
five inches of rain, maybe, maybe more. Uh, and I've noticed that uh, if you have a little bit of a aphids and then that rain is dry and the rain comes, they just seem to multiply like crazy. Over here in the uh, zucchini area, they're uh, they're on they're they're on these leaves too. Now I do have a pretty good. Ah, uh, there, see them all coming on there. One thing you can do with zucchini that might help without pulling up the plant, without spraying anything, you might be able to uh, prune a lot of these branches off because they, they, I think they even got it, I see them, all of them on there, they even got on this one. Uh, zucchini will take a good pruning. Uh, if you'll keep some of the good le good leaves on it, uh, I don't think I have much of a problem over here. Uh oh, there's a there's an old uh, ladybug larva. He don't look like he's doing too good. Is he still alive? Uh, I don't know. You see him down there? There he is. I think he's still kicking, buddy. You need to get over there and eat some uh, eat some aphids, bud. You may be too full. See them back back there. So I think what I'm going to come through here is get everything a good pruning. Give these. There's cucumber beetle. Well, I tell you what, I know all about them. See the ants up here? Yeah, they're trying to feed. They're trying to milk those aphids. Yeah, I think I'm going to come through here and give everything a good pruning. I brought my some old feed bags here. And I'll probably pull that one, just pull that plant up, that cucumber up. They don't seem to be, look there. There's another ladybug larva going to work. Come on, buddy, eat them up. Uh, I may, yeah, I got some on this one too. I may try to prune some of this up. He can, he, he'll, eat, he'll eat a lot, but I don't know if he'll be able to eat all this. There's another one right there. Let me see it in there. Another larva trying to eat those cute aphids. Man, they just explode on there. When it gets a little bit wet weather, they just explode. So, I guess that's what I'm going to do. Do a lot of clipping. And, uh... I'll uh, bring you back and show you what it looks like once I prune all these uh, zucchini back. So uh, give me a few minutes. Okay, here we go. Uh, this one that was over here it was so far gone. I just that cucumber, I just pulled him up. Some of my problem is this crazy vine peach that reseeded this year. It's just you know they just take over if you look back over here I did give them I did get rid of a lot of the fine peach over here and the basket gourd that had surrounded those uh, this pear tree and these some of the bigger gourds that were on that underneath that uh, vine when I cleared it all out but I cleared it out and I cleared all the way around here uh, I left this tomato plant that had coming up uh, uh, on its own. I left it. Came over here and I made a path. I cleared up the vine. Here's the compost pile, all that stuff. I pulled up some uh, uh, some other plants. Uh, I can't even think of the one I pulled up right now. My memory's going. But I cleared that all around here trimmed around my uh, hay bale made me a path you know I don't really like walking through these paths I don't walk through these uh, vine peaches and basket gourds when you don't know what's underneath you don't want to step on any snake so I cleared them out here's some of those vine peaches oh they're getting they're big this year this one's not ripe yet uh, you can see it there. It's not ripe. It's uh, it'll turn completely yellow when it's ripe. But uh, this kind of gives you an idea. These are big. We're getting a lot of rain. They're really swelling up. 
you can see them down in here. Uh, they were used a lot in the Victorian age, and you can look them up, vine peaches. Uh, they were kind of a fruit extender. If you were making a uh, some kind of a cobbler or uh, uh, with apples or pears or something like that, and you were l uh, short, you could go out and pick some of these vine peaches, and uh, you could cut them up and put them in there with that apple or pear, or, and uh, to give you a, a, a enough uh, for your recipe, and they would. Uh, kind of absorb the flavor of the apple or pear or whatever so they were kind of a uh, kind of a fruit extender and they used them a lot in the Victorian age uh, but one thing about them is the chickens just love these things and so that's why I let them grow that way I can uh, when they get a little bit more ripe I mean they need them now you just cut them open and uh, I don't have a knife with me you cut them open. Let me get this shovel and see if I can do it with this shovel. There you go. You can see the inside here. And uh, you throw those out there, especially when they're ripe. And those chickens will just... They'll just pick them when there's all nothing left but just the shell. Just the skin. So, that's what I usually do. I just th throw them out to the the chickens and hopefully they land right side up and they will just peck and peck and peck now all, all of you be left is the skin but anyway so let's get back to what we were talking about here I get kind of go down the rabbit trails here uh, so over here you can see my some of the piles there's a bag fulls of uh, uh, it's just full of uh, aphids. But anyway, here's some of my piles of what I trim back. Now, gave him a good haircut in here. Now, did I get rid of all the aphids? No. I didn't. There's still aphids down in here. As a matter of fact, I can probably walk right over here now that I'm looking right in there. I ought to go ahead and just cut those off and I probably will. But what I did was, number one, I opened it up a little bit for a little, a little more airflow through here to help with any powdery mildew I might get. And second, what I did was now I made it easier to come in, especially uh, this one over here, because they're all, they're all the leaves, bottom sides of the leaves are all standing up for me now. Uh, now I can come in and I can uh, uh, spray uh, a soapy solution or whatever to kill these aphids and uh, I have a better chance of, of getting them because beforehand with all those uh, with that big old bundle of leaves there it's really hard to uh, get in there and get all those leaf surfaces the bottoms and the tops but now since I thinned it out thinned these out I should be able to get my sprayer in here and have a better chance of uh, of uh, trying to control these aphids. But that's what happens uh, here where I'm at. Hot, hot weather. You get a ton of uh, rain comes and then the aphids just explode. Uh, goji berries. Man, I wish I liked the way those things tasted better. I got plenty of them, don't I? Uh, but my tomato problem is that with all this rain, it has really, they have just uh, busted wide open on the bottoms. I threw a lot of them to the chickens this morning. Uh, I don't know if I've got any more that that happened to. Let me get this one down here in the bottom, see if we can come up and hang down here. Yeah, that one's all right. It's a little mushy right there. But that's my problem is there's, they're just splitting wide open with all this rain. As you can see, I've kind of just let these tomatoes grow on the ground. They're on these wood chips, so I don't have to worry about mud or anything. Let's see what I can get in here and find anything. Now, well, see how that one's splitting open? The ones this morning, though, were really bad. They were just all the way open uh, to the meat, and that one's getting that way. So, anyway, that's kind of my problem with all this rain. 
you know, a little too much of anything is sometimes is bad. So, uh, but anyway, so there's my problem: is these crazy aphids. I don't seem to have a problem on the on my other side of the garden where I have cucumbers right now. I don't see any aphids over there, uh, but they are over here, and uh, I got to bag all this up and uh, put it for the trash man Thursday, and that'll help. Uh, that'll help me now. I can get them out and maybe better control them with some soapy water. Show you my. Uh, wood chips over here my son-in-law I have a little short video of him out here working last Saturday it was hot as could be he volunteered he called me up and said hey you need me to come over and help spread your wood chips and I said well sure I mean I see you do it but uh, so hot but he came over and he uh, he spread them all out through there Oh, about a 12 foot wide 50 foot section of uh, wood chips now I got to come along here and spread a few more uh, uh, even it out a little bit but boy I'm sure thankful for that so Ty thank you very much and uh, that sure took a lot of weight off my shoulders for you doing that and uh, so anyway I'm it's good to have a good son-in-law uh, so now I'm no matter what my daughter thinks of him, he's, he's all right in my books. But anyway, so things are going good over here on this side. A lot of cucumbers are growing. Down here, I got them growing on top of the wood chips. I came and thinned out my goji, not my goji, my jujubes. Oh, I took about 100, 100, maybe 100, 120 fruit off this jujube to see if that'll help it, uh, the fruit to get a little bit bigger this year. Uh, Still got some watermelons are still growing over there. I've never had I raised watermelons before. Got three of them. My uh, Seminole pumpkin is finally starting. Put out some pumpkins, and I'm I had to show have something to show for all that bragging I did on these things. But uh, so that's good. There's another one down there. Now, when these get a little bit bigger before they start turning, when they're still green, you can just treat these like zucchini, so that's a good thing. And so anyway, I got another cucumber growing over there. So, apples are still growing. Probably another couple months on those. Right up here. So, things are looking good. And uh, I hope you all have a great week. And if you need any rain, I hope you get some of this because uh, we've had plenty. And it's so muggy right now, I'm, about to, I'm just about to rain myself. So, y'all have a wonderful day. And uh, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.